today on Santa Monica Update. Want to have a say in your city's planning? Well, you've got three more chances to do so. There are many people living on the streets of Santa Monica. Who are the most vulnerable? City officials released the results of a new study. The details straight ahead. These stories and more coming up. I'm Keena Chin. Santa Monica Update. Your source for local news in Santa Monica. Welcome to Santa Monica Update. Topping our show, honoring a special beach and the first black surfer. The beach in front of Bay Street has for almost 100 years been a special gathering place for black families and friends. Now Inkwell Beach, as it was known earlier in the last century, has been recognized with a commemorative plaque for once being the only place on the west side where blacks can relax and feel welcome on the sand and in the surf. Nicholas Gabaldon, a Samoa High graduate and the first black surfer in Southern California, began his career at the Inkwell and is honored on the plaque. The Venice Family Clinic on Pico Boulevard is one of the largest free clinics in the nation. Now Kaiser Permanente has given the free clinic a $575,000 grant. It's the latest in a long history of gifts from the noted HMO. The money will help complete the clinic's renovation of the Pico facility allow for a full-time physician to travel among the clinic's seven locations and help eligible patients enroll for public health services. Speaking of donations, another notable large grant has come to the Santa Monica Historical Society Museum. The Maesterich Company, operator of Santa Monica Place, which is now in renovation, has donated $100,000 to help the society build its museum at the new main library. If you want to know how you, too, can help the museum, call 310 395-2290 or go to santamonicahistory.org. The Department of Planning and Community Development works within the guidelines of the city's general plan to form a blueprint for the physical development of the community. With hopes for more participation, they're inviting the community to play an active role in the shaping of our great city by running community-based workshops. Reporter Heather Armstrong has the story. Over 100 city residents showed up at the John Adams Middle School to attend a community workshop that's focusing on two elements of the general plan, land use and circulation. This is the ninth in a series of 12 workshops that encourages community input. The focus of today's group will be land use and zoning as it pertains to city boulevards. City boulevards in a lot of the areas are really different than the residential. They border the residential. There's a lot of strip design in this city, meaning the commercial just runs along, quote, Wilshire Boulevard, Santa Monica, and behind it's residential. The two have to be compatible in light and air and traffic. The real purpose is to hear from all of the people and the people in the community about is what we're presenting, does this reflect what they've told us over the past year? The commission's goal is to represent the values of the community. They do this through workshops that take a hands-on approach. All in attendance see what it's like to participate firsthand in the planning, design, and illustration of their ideal community. This is a very inter interactive group. And what we're doing is breaking down into very small groups of 10 or 12 people to address specific interests of those, those people. So they do have input exactly on each topic that we're addressing, the issues and the solutions. I think being on the Planning Commission, and I am actually also a practicing architect, I found that uh, these community processes can be uh, tremendously worthwhile because it, 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 it takes a lot of hard work on everybody's behalf to really uh, get that in, involvement. And I think that it's, it's frequently the, the idea that as experts we sometimes feel like we know the answers, but I've always been very surprised by how astute people are when they're given real choices to understand what the trade-offs are. All agree that it's this combination of the experts and community feedback that make the workshops a success. We may be professionals but we need to hear from people who have lived here. One year, five years, 20 years, it's your community. And there could be many different pers uh, professional perspectives, but for a plan to work over a 10 or 20 year period, it has to reflect a general community consensus because if it doesn't, it will be changed. Get out of bed at nine o'clock in the morning, come down here and participate. 
be heard, be a, be a part of the process, uh, feel like you're being heard, feel like you're, you're a part of the process, uh, and contribute to the, the life and vitality and the future of the city. According to state law, each county and city in California must have a 20-year long-term comprehensive plan and must have an outline that states clearly and concisely a way to get there. These workshops are your opportunity to have your ideas heard. It's also a great way to participate in the shaping of your city's future. For Santa Monica Update, I'm Heather Armstrong. The next meeting explores how to enhance and improve Ocean Park Boulevard between Lincoln and Nielsen Way. The next workshop is on March 3rd from 6.30 to 9 p.m. at the Santa Monica Alternative Schoolhouse. For more information, go to www.shapethefuture2025.net. Kids in the Santa Monica Malibu Unified School District will be getting an excellent musical education, as well as superior libraries in the future as a result of the passage of Measure R in the recent election. It makes permanent a tax of $346 per parcel, which amounts to about $10 million in school funding each year. The measure, overwhelmingly approved by more than 72 percent, exempts senior citizens. Santa Monica police have arrested three local youngsters who admitted making prank calls that resulted in Lincoln and John Adams Middle Schools undergoing safety lockdowns. During the emergency, parents were informed by telephone using an automated dialing system and students were locked in their classrooms. After the schools were determined to be safe, students were escorted away and released to their parents. The juveniles admitted taking part in the prank calls. They were each cited, released to their parents, and may face suspension from school. Now coming up, the SMPD is moving to a new beat, but it's not musical. More when we come back. Welcome back to Santa Monica Update. Good news often comes in small steps. However, in January, the Santa Monica Police Department took a large step to get to know the city better. The police department has changed the beat system to more accurately reflect the needs of residents and merchants. Called community-oriented policing, the new, more efficient patrol plan offers a single person whom residents can contact with concerns about their neighborhood. Think of the new contact person as your equivalent of the old-time small-town sheriff. The neighborhood resource officer is the designated contact person for recurring concerns like developing crime trends or other non-routine needs. In our last show, we told you about a new program to bring much-needed services to the most at-risk people on the streets of Santa Monica. Volunteers brave cold early morning temperatures to conduct a survey, and reporter Joe McDonald has the results. Homelessness has been a subject of concern in Santa Monica for several years now. Various projects have taken 77 people off the street so far. 77 people, that may not sound like a lot, but these are some of the most severely disabled, most chronically mentally ill and substance abuse um, population that we have in the city. Volunteers went out over three of the coldest nights of the year. They talked to 261 homeless people. Of those people, they identified more than 100 who were most at risk for dying on the streets. They did this through a service registry that was imported from New York. More than 40 questions aimed to help even further by putting a human face on the homeless epidemic in Santa Monica. Well, the point of this was really to find the people who are the most vulnerable, the people who don't have the wherewithal, the, aren't able to make the choices to get themselves to a cold weather shelter program or someplace else where they would be off the streets. So these are our most vulnerable people. The service registry broke down the numbers like this. The average age of a homeless person in Santa Monica is 49, but the average age of the most vulnerable is 55. The average number of years a person lives on the street is eight, but for the at-risk, the number is a staggering 11 years outside. The person deemed the most vulnerable has been on the street for 20 years. One person is 85 years old. The survey looked at a number of different factors when making the assessment, such as hospitalization, trips to the emergency room, and the possibility of alcoholism and cirrhosis of the liver. Officials are looking to get the first 10 off the streets as soon as possible. Then they will turn their attention to the next 10, with the ultimate goal of saving the lives of all the people who are most at risk. For Santa Monica Update, I'm Joe McDonald. The service registry will be continually updated to get services to the people who need them the most. Goodbye, Styro. Hello, Recyclables. 
The City of Santa Monica's ban on non-recyclable food containers is now in effect. This law will help the health of the marine environment as well as begin keeping our beaches clean. The white plastic pellets that take forever to break down will someday be only a bad memory. For now though, if you see a food vendor serving food in a styrofoam container, be sure to let them know it's against the law. For more information on styrofoam and the new law, go to smepd.org container. Did you know the city is offering grants for landscaping that saves water? If you're interested, you should get on it now. The ending deadline is coming up quick. Move away from landscaping that pollutes and drains resources by creating one that acts like natural flora and fauna. Save money and energy with a water efficient system. The ending date to apply is March 27th, so get your application at smgov.net. Scroll down to find landscape grant and download the PDF to plan your project. Or you can call 866-728-3229. It's art, not commerce, right? Well, maybe not. If you want to make a living as an artist, you'll have to consider a bunch of issues. Defining goals, understanding value, determining worth, and planning a business are all parts of implementing your vision. California Lawyers for the Arts is offering an evening seminar about these questions on March 12th at the Ken Edwards Center. You'll need reservations, so call 310-998-5590. Classical music lovers rejoice. Two interesting Sunday concerts are coming up. On March 16th, the Rossetti String Quartet, which has been described as a vital force in chamber music, will give a free performance at the new SMC Performing Arts Center. Call 310-434-3414 for your reservation. And on March 30th, the SMC Symphony Orchestra will feature the Brandenburg Concerto No. 2 by Bach and Ravel's Mother Goose Suite at the Concert Hall. Tickets are $12. Call 310-434-3000. And that's it for this edition of Santa Monica Update. I'm Kina Chin. For all of us at City TV, thanks so much for watching.